Hi everybody, I'm Bill Little and this is The Firewall. You know, every now and then you'll see someone come forward and talk about some affliction they have or an addiction or something like that. And they speak frankly about it in order to demystify things that are often considered shameful in order to make it easier for other people to cope or seek treatment. So in that vein, I'd like to take a moment to discuss with you my brief history of mental illness. Now, I started to notice it right around my senior year in high school, but it wasn't until I got to the University of Florida as a theater major in 1979 that it really reached full flower. I was insane when I was in college. Looking back on it, I simply don't know how else to describe it, so let me give you a few examples. In 1980, I was getting ready to go on stage. I've only been in two plays during my entire life. One was in the classic comedy, You Can't Take It With You, and the other one wasn't. About five minutes to eight o'clock on the night of Tuesday, November 4th, 1980, just before we went on, the stage manager came running through the wing shouting, it's all over, it's all over, we're all going to die. What do you mean it's all over? What's all over? Why are we gonna die? Reagan! He won the election, Carter's already conceded, the Soviet warheads are probably already on their way. Now the stage manager was scared and the other actors were scared and I was scared. I was scared because I was barking mad crazy. That's why I was scared. So how bad was it? Well, looking back, I can say that while I didn't go full progressive, you should never go full progressive. I did have some uh, wacky ideas. I'd say and think things like, you know, if a criminal breaks into my apartment and steals my TV set in order to buy himself something to eat, then that's okay, because I'm bright and educated and I can always go out and get another TV set. Or, this senile old fool of a president is just a talking head who's too stupid to see how he's destroying the country. Or, why do we need to have guns when we have the police? Or, if we just raise taxes and give poor people money, then there wouldn't be any more poverty. I was mentally ill. I was mentally ill because I passionately believed in things that I knew nothing about. That's why I was mentally ill. You know, one night, someone did come into my student ghetto apartment to steal my TV set. Absolutely did. I heard him come through the window. I looked up, and he was about a foot away from my face. He didn't come to take my TV set to get a meal, feed his family. He broke into my apartment, my pathetic little apartment, to steal the only thing I owned so that he could sell it and get high. And if I'd walked in on him, there's a fair chance he would have killed me for the $15 he could have gotten for that black and white TV set. And that senile old fool of a president was a man with a philosophy of freedom that he wrote out in his own hand over years of patient study and contemplation while on the road alone late at night after a long national speaking tour he did for General Electric. And the police never, almost never, actually stop a crime in progress, dashing into the room, guns drawn seconds before someone's about to be murdered or raped. That's in the movies. That doesn't happen. The police arrive to draw the chalk outline around your body because when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. And the idea of giving endless fish to people who don't know how to fish and not only didn't teach people how to fish, it destroyed any incentive they might ever have to go fish for themselves like free people instead of sitting there like seals in an aquarium. You know, there were a lot of those moments, and I'm ashamed of all of them, but the one thing I'm most ashamed of is that in 1984, I voted for, in, 19, in 1984, in 1984, I actually voted for Walter Mondale, and I did it because he said he was going to raise taxes. You know, some men go ashore at Normandy or Iwo Jima. Some men openly admit that they voted for Walter Mondale. The causes are different, but the thousand-yard stare, well, that remains the same. But there was some shred of sanity in me even then when my girlfriend at the time, let's call her Kimberly because that was her name, declared that she was a communist. I just laughed, and when she insisted that she was a communist, I said, Kim, you're not a communist. You are a communist. You'd take that TV and that stereo and that jewelry down to a pawn shop and you'd sell it and you'd give the money to the poor people of the town. And that was the end of that relationship. But it was P.J. O'Rourke who brought me back to sanity. P.J. O'Rourke, who, like me, was a former barking mad, long-haired slacker, but who furthermore was also a bomb-throwing leftist. 
until he traveled the world and saw that for all of America's injustice and stupidity and corruption, everywhere else was worse. Holidays in hell, Parliament of Horrors, Eat the Rich, P.J. O'Rourke taught me that good enough is good enough because perfect doesn't exist and those people that say it does will kill you if you disagree with them. So when it comes to the big things, while I may not always be right, I am never wrong. I know that sounds arrogant. It's the exact opposite of arrogant. Look, I'm a pilot. I'm a rhetorical pilot as well and I take people on journeys. I have an obligation to pre-flight these ideas, to kick the tires and wiggle the flaps and check the pitot tubes for obstruction and most importantly, to have some idea where the hell we're going. Every day, every single day, I ask myself, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? What if you can just keep printing money? What if healthcare really is free? What if a stranger's moral comfort is more important than your right to defend yourself? What if dependency and envy are in fact good and kind things to have? Well, they're not. Capitalism is better than socialism. Not because I say so, but because all of the rafts are going from Cuba to America and none of the rafts are going from America to Cuba. Freedom is better than tyranny because no one ever got shot trying to climb a wall to get into East Berlin. Equality of opportunity is more fair, more humane, and more fun than equality of result because equality of result has to be enforced in places called gulags. I'm saying now because now I actually understand the things that I believe in and when I'm wrong I move. I move to where the truth is or at least where it appears to be because I'd rather be right than consistent. My friends, the truth is out there. It's right out there in the grass, visible from behind the bars of our preconceptions and our ignorance. It just takes the courage and the desire to go to where the truth sits and sit there too, rather than trying to do the intellectual and rhetorical somersaults needed to try to get the truth to come to you. The truth doesn't care about where we sit. It sits where it sits. You have to go to it. It won't come to you. And to think that it will, well, that that's just nuts. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and be sure to visit us at truthrevolt.org.